Welcome to this week's lecture. Today we will be talking about SPSS system design, the transition path strategies and the challenges. So how to transition towards sustainability. So we will be discussing it along with certain barriers that come in its path. So the potential barriers can come from the customers or the users of the uh, product. Another one is from companies who are supposed to manufacture and sell these uh, products and services. The third from government and the fourth from designers or developers who are supposed to design and develop these uh, solutions. So eco-efficient product service system, user acceptance barriers. Say for example, mobile phone, this is something which we all of us need uh, today because uh, of the internet and the smartphone uh, penetration we require uh, certain kind of mobile phone it has become kind of a necessity also in order to be able to do the particular uh, activities we need certain ram certain features in that particular mobile phone so a particular mobile phone after a year's time or two years time because uh, the demand from our way of consuming that mobile phone requires way much better system in the mobile phone better ram and better system configuration so we uh, want to discard our phone and we want to get a new phone that's kind of a mm, individual's uh, choice other things can be social norms or social status Say for example, we go to um, go on a travel or we go to a party, we need to drink water. It's uh, not at all fashionable to carry your water when you are going to a um, say a party or going to a uh, marriage celebration or say we are traveling, we need to drink safe uh, water. We do not have the option at this moment in the current settings that we can carry a bottle and keep on filling it up. So most likely the only available solution which is available at every nook and corner is buy a plastic water bottle. So the consumption perspective, it might be individual choices mm, that I want to do it in a particular manner and which is influenced by social norms as well as institutional settings. So because uh, say all railway stations uh, might not have a water purifier and uh, clean drinking water facility. They might have a drinking water uh, facility from where you can collect water bottle but that facility is not connected to a water purifier. So you might not want to drink water from there. Or say for example I am going on a uh, road trip. There are not enough institutional facilities available where I can take my bottle of water and fill up my bottle of water. So the only institutional setting which is available to me is there are lots of shops which sell this bottled water. So individual choice of drinking uh, safe water which is also required for health reasons and institutional settings that you have to buy these uh, bottled drinking waters and the social norms which might be because of the social status or because a certain behavior at a particular moment requires you to do a certain thing. Say for example during Diwali all of us together want to burn crackers that is a kind of a social norm and you would not want to digress from that social norm because you want to belong to a particular community and all your friends are doing that particular activity. So in that particular case you are burning crackers which are environmentally not very great because of social norms. So the first problem comes because of individual choice influenced by social norms and institutional settings. So as designers we have to try to understand how we can in order to bring a more sustainable consumption I have to actually influence somewhere on the individual choice by influencing the social norms or the institutional settings. Next comes the economic factors. The industrial revolution, how the industrial revolution was mm, organized. So the industrial revolution led to increased production volumes and reduced product prices, determining the need to sell more and more new products. So how can you maintain that level of production at an economical scale? In order to be economical, you have to have large scale production. That's what the industrial revolution was all about. 
in order to maintain that large scale production you want people to consume at a large scale so the problem of this industrial revolution was that it forced people towards ownership driven consumption it forced people towards more and more consumption so the industrial revolution can survive it encouraged creation of demand for more artifacts through strategic intervention say for example advertisement or uh, say building in uh, in the product itself a particular life span so you know that within one year the technology in this product will be obsolete which is the case with most of our electronic products like mobile phones these days and you need to buy a new one then economic and political institutions also persuaded people to believe that higher material prosperity is the expected behavior say for example how is a country's development measured gdp gross domestic product which means how much you consume the per capita consumption so the political institution persuaded people to consume more and more because your country's development is now measured in terms of gdp bhutan came up with a very interesting uh, measure of measuring a country's success which is the gross happiness index so rather than measuring uh, development in terms of product measure it in terms of how happy your people are another problem the econ in the economic factor is say for example consider the two options the first option over here is electricity produced by grids the second option is where i am although connected to the grid i may or may not be but i am having some kind of solar energy generation or maybe wind energy generation so in the first context where i am connected to the grid me as a consumer i do not pay for setting up the grid i only pay on per unit basis but currently the system of renewable energy has been designed in a particular manner that i have to pay for the solar panels which makes it very expensive for me there are very few pss oriented solutions which do not ask you to pay for the solar panels they give you those solar panels free of uh, uh, cost because they do not transfer the ownership to you the ownership remains with the company all you do is pay per unit of um, electricity then it can become equivalent to this particular system so since the environmental and social cost connected to products are not included in their market price so in this particular case the grid electricity if i am producing the electricity through thermal power plant as you had seen in the life cycle assessment lectures they have certain kind of ecological burden they also have certain kind of social burden now the cost of nullifying that or reducing that burden is not included in my product which is electricity hence the market price of it seems to be low so since environmental and social costs connected to products are not included in their market prices it can become difficult for eco efficient pss solutions to compete with industrially produced solutions so even in this particular context the solar and the other renewable energy sources even if a company wants to provide it to you at uh, by giving a pss uh, offering for the company it becomes very much expensive because what are they not getting a benefit is of reducing the eco burden whereas in this case they are causing the burden but they are not paying for the burden so there is a new system which has come into place which is about carbon trading wherein all those people who produce uh, mm, uh, Uh, excessive uh, carbon dioxide in order to be able to produce they have to pay up certain price which is the offsetting price and this offsetting price can be actually used to sponsor activities like the renewable energy sources which actually offset that another economic factor is pre pss because we are talking about product plus service so now service requires human labor so it is a labor intensive solution now there can be two kinds of context so you can see in this particular picture over here this is a kind of a context which we can see in say um, uh, india or maybe some other developing countries where labor is relatively cheap here get here we do not bother so much about repairing our bicycle all by ourselves because we can go to a bicycle repair shop they are quite plentiful in number and we can get the um, work done at almost hardly any money being paid 
we can get a puncture repair done say for maybe 20 rupees or 30 rupees which is almost nothing so the, uh, this uh, PSS which is labor intensive solution the cost of offering a PSS will vary if it is in a context say for example Indian context it might be uh, cheaper because labor is cheaper over here so providing that product plus service combination in Indian context might be cheaper whereas in developed countries where labor is more expensive it might be a very expensive solution so depending on the context we have to work out the solution another economic factor is the consumers do not have knowledge and understanding about the entire life cycle cost say for example I go to buy an air conditioner I will compare five different air conditioners I am comparing them at that point of time on the basis of my initial uh, cost that I will be spending in terms of ownership of that particular machine I am not thinking about the lifetime cost because the lifetime cost is also distributed over a large period of time so I think it's okay so if there are two products one of them uh, one of the product is mm, uh, say consumes uh, 50 watts lesser than the other product but costs at the initial time some 20,000 rupees more than the other product and at that point of time if I do not have that 20,000 or if I'm not willing to pay that 20,000 or if I feel that it is not worth it because the lifetime life cycle cost I'm going to pay at mm, uh, uh, much smaller amounts over a long period of time I might make a wrong decision so which is because of my problem of understanding about the life cycle other thing is about knowledge say for example in this chart I am trying to show okay if uh, it is 5 star it means this much amount of energy if it is 4 star then it means this much amount of energy so most of the times products are also not giving us that knowledge or there is uh, hardly any advertisement campaign which talks about such kind of a knowledge to the consumers so that can also be because it's not very easy to think in terms of life cycle for people so we might also make wrong decisions which are environmentally damaging then there are certain psychosocial factors so consumption choices are dependent on your prior consumption patterns say for example in this particular context this is a workstation this is an office area it can also be a, mm, a college setting where um, one has a cubicle now if I am used to a open office area where every day I come and I get a new location so I first find out which location can I sit and start my work and I get used to that kind of a consumption pattern then sharing is okay for me in this particular context only in the work environment but say I am not used to that kind of a context I am used to having my own personal mm, uh, workspace my own personal computer which I have personalized and I start working in that particular computer for me to shift to an open work area it is very very difficult because it requires me to change my consumption pattern say for this particular example this is a public transportation system uh, running in uh, our, on our roads and because it's a public transportation we are very much open to the idea of sharing this particular vehicle with unknown people so in this context we have our mental model is that sharing is okay so if you want to bring in another kind of a vehicle which is following the same particular model of sharing then it is much more easily acceptable so in relation to eco-efficient PSS the problem is that if solutions based on sharing and access contradict the dominant and well established norm of ownership making consumers hesitant to accept ownerless based solutions so you have to consider whether this is a context where pe what is people's dominant way of behaving in case the dominant way of behaving is a PSS solution then uh, you don't have to do anything to change their way of consumption but in case it is not then it's a long process to convince people that why should they change their way of consumption say for example in Indian context it is very normal for all of us to own a washing machine at home for us when if somebody says okay why don't you have a washing machine owned by mm, the entire building use that washing machine we might be concerned about issues like hygiene 
and whether it will be available to us at the time when we want it but on the other hand when we give our clothes to a washerman so a person who is washing clothes in a washing machine might also be giving some of the clothes to the washerman that time the same considerations of hygiene and whether it will be available to me on time or not is not um, a concern why because people have got used to washing machine being always available being a personal product and the washerman there is a time frame in which things will happen there might be also times when the washerman does not deliver on time so we are mentally prepared to accept that so in case you want to make them shift to a building based uh, washing machine solution you have to work out a situation uh, say for example a campaign or something of that sort so that people can make that shift and you have to be always aware that it's very difficult for people to make that shift so another barrier to the diffusion of ownerless based solution is the fact that the quantity and quality of accumulated goods is perceived as a measure of success in life because they represent an indicator of a certain position in society so we do not uh, start trying to own products just because we need that product vacuum cleaners are a classic example in our, in our country when vacuum cleaners were introduced in the market a lot of people bought vacuum cleaners anybody who could uh, afford that because of the social status factor or the norm or because they want to said that okay we belong to a certain position in the society people bought a vacuum cleaner but it's not a product which suited our uh, kind of cleaning requirements so most of the vacuum cleaners which were bought are hardly used but everybody bought a vacuum cleaner so uh, products is not only about giving you a certain utility but it is also about a certain it's an indicator of a certain position in society now that becomes a barrier to ownerless based solutions another one the current trend towards individualization is boosting consumption demand because a person's identity is no longer defined by a community but rather by the goods she or he owns so say for example you want to buy a custom design laptop or you want to buy a customized mm, piece of garment or you want to buy a product which you can personalize in certain manners so the industrial revolution because they wanted to you to consume more and more they tr try to bring in this whole concept of personalization that you personalize your product and then it becomes a part of your identity it defy your products that you carry defines who you are and you can make a statement through the products that you carry so all these kind of campaigns led to a trend towards individualization which again means it has to be owned so oh, that is another barrier towards ownerless based solutions so we again have to do design certain kind of campaigns or certain kind of products which brings people away from that personalization that it's not personalization through which um, uh, personalization by increasing com consumption that you prove your identity let's prove our identity by being less of a consumption freak there is also hesitation like in the case of the washing machine that we discussed there is hesitation towards offers based on ownerless access and sharing because of the perceptions of independence when i want it i want it i should not be dependent on an app i should not be dependent on the availability at that point of time hygiene and intimacy because we always try to tend connected to get connected to our product so we also start feeling very so i love my mobile phone i love my sofa set so that's a kind of an intimacy you believe build up with your products also which you can do only with your own products you cannot do products in with those products in which case they are ownerless based solution where you are only consuming the result which is coming out of it so material consumption is not linked to happiness so there has been lot of research which has been done so the material ownership the material wealth of our um, uh, population has drastically increased since the industrial revolution has uh, come into picture the material um, uh, prosperity although differs between developed countries and developing countries but overall there has been a increase in material prosperity for each and every individual but the same study when it tries to find out are people more happy because of this uh, greater increase of this increase in material prosperity that is not the case so which clearly shows that material consumption is not linked to 
happiness whenever uh, people have been asked like what makes you happy materials are have always taken a lower priority as compared to other mm, aspects like the relations with their mm, loved ones and so on so now how to bring transition to this sustainable product service system so i will show you some examples certain experiments certain perspectives of different sets of mm, uh, people one of the important aspects of why we would like to have something in our life is aesthetics aesthetics is not necessarily only visual visually you find something very beautiful that is a very important part because our eyes plays a very important part in determining whether something is beautiful or not but our uh, aesthetics can be perceived through all our five senses which is um, vision our ears which is hearing mm, our taste buds our smell mm, senses and our touch senses so say for example you find a food beautiful because maybe it also looks good and it also tastes very good and it also smells very good so that's the aesthetics of food you find a piece of garment very beautiful of course because the colors or the patterns are beautiful or the de design of the dress is very beautiful and as well as when you touch it and it feels very soft and nice so aesthetics is perceived by all our five senses so when we talk about a product's aesthetics it is only given by that particular product given to all our five senses not all products will engage all our five senses whichever senses it is engaging now similarly when we are talking about product service system we are talking about a system so here in this cause in this case we have to consider about the systems aesthetics how does my system look beautiful how does my system feel beautiful for example so in this picture you can see it's a wash bar by mm, lg electronics laundry it was established in 2005 in paris users have access to the washing machines and dryers but also to a bar and various recreational cultural services such as a uh, wifi internet connection short film showings and participation in organized events the interior spaces appear like a bar or a games room in which washing machines and dryers are integrated so this is a piece of service here you can it's a mm, uh, uh, place where you can wash your clothes and dry your clothes now because it's a bar plus a washing mm, uh, area so you come over here so at the end of the day mm, when you want to relax you and you also want to clean your clothes so you come to this particular wash bar bring your clothes put your clothes in the washing machine they it will do its job then you will put them into the dryer then it will do its job and in this, in this uh, whole time you can uh, refresh yourself in the bar with the various activities and various uh, activities and the community building that can happen you can interact with interesting people over there who are also waiting for their clothes to get washed now a very boring activity like washing clothes which is a necessity but it's boring like anything and it's a waste of time it becomes such an interesting thing to do it's a relaxing job so you can see the beauty in this whole system so this is what i mean by systems aesthetics let's come to an example from indian context so this is a dump yard a landfill where uh, mm, uh, the municipal wastes are mm, dumped this is how rag pickers look in our country they will be picking up items which might have a resale value and then go and sell it to the mm, appropriate people they are amongst the most marginalized part of our society you can see they have nothing to protect themselves from all the mm, uh, mm, filth in that place they uh, the mm, risks of uh, fatal illness is very very high amongst them also because we find them dirty because they work in such dirty conditions we just do not want to have anything to do with them we want them to be as far as uh, away as possible from us their income levels are also extremely low so they are very very exploited on those levels also so a particular mm, organization in gujarat called seva it's a mm, self employed women's association decided to change the fate of this 
and most drag pickers are you know, women there are most of them 80% around 80% of them are women so this organization decided that let's organize these people give them proper training give them proper equipment and then uh, employ them as a group in certain areas to do the waste picking so rather than being rag pickers now they were trained to become professional garbage collectors from homes now for them to be ad- uh, taken at homes so this is how they look like right now so they in place of their gunny bags they were equipped with modern cleaning tools like road and floor cleaners vacuum cleaners high jet pressure mm, uh, cleaners microfiber mops carpet shampooing machines scrubbers and extractors they were trained in doing these they were also given uniform they were given protective gear they were trained in how to build interpersonal relationships because they have to go to households to collect their garbage as well now then they are going to a household and because garbage is value uh, if the garbage is mixed then it becomes a very difficult job to segregate them your mm, uh, garbage also becomes so the dry garbage which is not contaminated say for example plastic bottles if not contaminated they can be much easily recycled if they are contaminated then they have to be clean so which is an additional process so they need to also go and persuade every householder that you should do segregation of garbage now we do not consider the garbage uh, collectors as uh, people to whom we will listen to that's how our society is organized but when these people were trained they were also given this interpersonal training so how are you supposed to go and approach people and convince them to do Gar- uh, garbage segregation it worked really great because now the people's perspective towards looking at them changed now they were looked as professional garbage collectors who know what they are doing and who know what should be done properly so this is another kind of an example of building in aesthetics in the system where how did you build an aesthetics in the system you train people in using modern equipment you gave them protective gear you train them in communication skills you also brought in organizational change you made them into a particular association and this association goes and gets contracts for garbage collection from societies from institutional organizations rather than because the power over here lies in collectiveness another example designing for relative advantages and uncertainty reductions so while an overall idea may be beneficial to a wide range of people its final design needs to be compatible with values and habits of particular consumers say for example ola is a service using which you can mm, book a on demand transportation service now why does it have to be always cars in cars also at times i might need a share car which i can share with three or four people so every day i want to commute to office i do not want to spend lot of money and i can get a mm, car which can be shared by three or four people there might be times when i am traveling with large number of people so i might need a larger car there might be other times or maybe my budget is smaller i want a personal car but i want a smaller car which costs me mm, lesser in indian roads we also have auto rickshaws which are cheaper option why not auto rickshaws there are certain places like the place where i am from guwahati we have a brahmaputra river and we can of course cross it through the bridge but it takes much longer time an easier way is crossing it through the boat so why not have a ola boat service there is also ola outstation so i want to travel from city a to city b i take an ola outstation there is ola bike share so there is something like ola pedal a dockless bicycle sharing system available at iit kanpur and other large university campuses across india so what you see the overall idea is the same that i want to book a transport a, a means of transporting myself by using an application is just like depending on different situations i am making it compatible with the mm, values or habits of particular consumers i am not making like one solution fits everybody another one technological innovation complemented with social innovation 
so technological innovations are assumed to be radical aiming for technological paradigm shifts target environmental problems and are mainly pulled by governmental policies and pushed by emerging and enabling technologies social innovations either refer to those innovations aiming to solve social problems such as poverty and access to safe drinking water or those targeting behavioral change and social wellbeing so i will show you one example this is not an example of a product service system design but why i show you this example because it's a brilliant example how mm, technological innovation when combined with social innovation brings in great results so this example is from mm, amul so amul uh, all of us know that amul is a brand which makes milk and various milk products and it's a cooperative which does this particular activity so when the whole uh, milk revolution was supposed the white revolution was supposed to start in india in gujarat the source of milk was buffalo milk now there was uh, no uh, machinery available at that point of time for making skim milk powder from buffalo milk so hm dalia he innovated a machine which for the first time could make skim milk from buffalo milk so that was a technological innovation they also did a large number of technological innovations in order to collect the milk process the milk and so on but would that have succeeded only that would that have succeeded no they also brought in social innovation they created new systems new social systems new social organizations and together the social innovation and the technology will together brought in the white revolution so i will show the, you this video quickly the longer video i have put the link on this particular slide this video is 19 minutes long i will show you a shorter version of that particular um, uh, video from the milk delivered at your door to the smiling faces of the rural women is a magical journey that has taken india to the milestone of being the world's largest milk producer each day here is a revelation of how the amul wheel set in motion in a village like this travels many terrains across the country to reach your home thousands of automatic milk collection systems at village societies capture member information milk fat content and the amount payable to each farmer transaction that once took almost a month is over in a matter of seconds from dawn to dusk this winding line steadily flows forward and fresh milk continues to make its way on its never ending journey of health and happiness the unimaginable happens tirelessly every day with clockwork precision the milk collected from more than 2.6 million farmers across 13000 villages is tested graded and transported over 1200 routes to more than 30 dairy plants at the processing plants the milk is once again tested for quality processed and packaged the work reaches a frenzy pitch as milk pouches are sorted and loaded onto the milk delivery vans thus begins the exciting but tireless journey across the length and breadth of the country into the hearts and homes of india The vans travel through the night, arriving in the wee hours of the morning, right on time, so that you can savor your morning cup of tea, blissfully unaware of the amazing drama behind this packet of milk. It is an awakening for India, and a new call of freedom for the Indian farmer from the shackles of the middlemen. While the rest of the nation was gearing up for industrialization, Dr. Varghese Kurian, the father of the white revolution, placed all his trust in the simple farmers. Perhaps to a no like me it's a matter of faith. It is um, almost a religion. And unless you have faith, certain things cannot be done. What started off as a humble farmers cooperative grew to become Amul. Amul is indeed a brand with a difference. a brand whose history is synonymous with indian independence a brand that has transformed the lives of millions 
यहाँ आने से पहले मैंने सोचा था कि यहाँ चारों तरफ हरियाली हरियाली होगी यहाँ के मवेशी खुशी खुशी घास से अभय होंगे लेकिन यहाँ तो चारों तरफ सूखा ही सूखा है फिर क्या वजह है कि यहाँ की डेयरी और डेयरियों के बने ज्यादा कामयाब है इसका राज क्या है सर दरअसल कोई राज नहीं है जो बात है वो बिल्कुल साफ है हमारे देश की कोई भी और डेयरी ऐसी नहीं है जिसके मालिक खुद किसान हो आनंद किसानों की डेयरी है इसके मालिक यहाँ के किसान हैं। वो तय करते हैं कि यहाँ की क्या पॉलिसीज होगी उन्हीं के इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स इस यूनियन को चलाते हैं मैं भी यहाँ के किसानों का एक मुलाजिम हूँ जिन्होंने मुझे एक प्रोफेशनल मैनेजर के हैसियत से यहाँ रखा है अगर मैं अपना काम सही तरीके से ना करूँ तो आई विल बी थ्रोन आउट आई बी विदाउट जॉब इसका मतलब है कि और भी आनंद बनाए जा सकते हैं डेफिनेटली सर जब तक किसान अपना स्टेक समझे तो हर चीज ऐसी कामयाब होगी मिस्टर कुरियन मेरा पूरा सहयोग आपके साथ है और मैं चाहता हूं कि हिंदुस्तान के कोने कोने में आंदोलन फैले Amul follows an innovative three-tier organization structure known as the Anand pattern that marries the productive genius of farmers with professional management and modern technology. The replication of the Anand pattern across the country led to the success of Operation Flood. This heralded what is known as the White Revolution, and India emerged as the world's largest. Milk producing nation. The Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation, or GCMMF, runs on the binding principle that it exists solely because of the farmers. Its future inextricably linked to their future. Here, boardroom decisions are made, keeping a social mission in mind. The Amul girl, with her tongue-in-cheek observations, underlines this philosophy in a light-hearted spirit. Amul is constantly reinventing and nourishing its brand equity in a fashion that no marketing guru or book can ever teach. Millions today consume Amul. It has transcended its myriad product forms and endeared itself into the heart of India. At Amul, every single drop of milk brought in by the villagers is used to create something exceptional for the consumer. just about diversifying into new products it is more about their relevance in people's lives and on the economic independence they bring the farmers the aim is to cater to the needs of the customer with value added products without a fancy price tag here quality is a way of life at every level in this massive collection processing and distribution network the highest standards of hygiene are maintained per day mother dairy plant at gandhinagar india's most modern dairy has set the standards of excellence in processing and packaging the easy to use convenient tetra pack was introduced to give the cooperative dairy a competitive edge amul houses asia's biggest powder mill plant it was at amul that for the first time in the world buffalo milk was processed a memorable landmark in the amul When Amul crossed the seas, at first it was to cater to loyal customers abroad who were far away and craving for the familiar taste of their childhood. Gradually, the world started recognizing and relishing the taste of India. It is a heartwarming sight to see Amul making its presence felt in the largest malls in the world. <laughs> represents the best of family life that translates into education and emancipation for these girls that uplifts them giving them the power to direct their destiny pehla wo 5 liter nikalti atyare wo 120 liter upar hai amule to kuch jagah tan aap hi chahiye एटली खुशी छू एटली सुखी छू एटली सुखी छू के कोई बीजा धंधा थी सुखी नहीं एटली सुखी छू अमूल बहुत वफादार
can be achieved by one man. If you dedicate himself to that task, we always say what can one man do. One man can create an amour. example of how do you combine strategic partnerships strategic interactions which are part of social innovation and then you bring in technological innovation and together they achieve the task the next one is designing transition paths for the diffusion of sustainable system innovations so in this particular case because uh, sustainability always requires so our aim is we want to train people who can do this who can create this who can diffuse sustainable system innovations in the market so in order to do that we have to train people in certain things so starting from an university research context and through a continuous and iterative multi stakeholder learning process which also involves like experimentation niche market niche introduction scaling up branching of sustainable system innovation concept that can also be a particular possibility in order to explore this possibility um, professor carlo vesoli from uh, politecnico di milano formed with uh, some of his colleagues a network called as N lens network so it's learning and education network in sustainability now the network has grown up to include more than 150 universities all across the globe so you can see we also have a lens india which is partnered by a couple of universities from india we i also introduced this particular platform in our first lecture so you can go to this particular platform the platform link that i gave here is of lens india but when you go into the platform you can go to the uh, all in uh, individual uh, all the uh, partner websites so they have web, uh, platforms from brazil china south africa europe and so on so what we try to do is because each of our contexts are very different from each others say for example the context in brazil and context in india shares way much more similarities than maybe the context in europe so each country platform tries to do so they because these platforms are located in universities so through university the professors and the students of the university together try to experiment explore different ways and try to disseminate these knowledge so all the knowledge that we are trying to explore is disseminated on this particular platform it is open for everybody to use it in any particular manner that they want to use it so you can have resources like courses lectures tools case different case studies and criteria that we develop and different projects that we do sustainable product service system and policy approaches this is from what the governments can do so governments can play a crucial role in supporting the adoption and diffusion of spss 
by developing policy frameworks and stimulating proper conditions say for example in indian agriculture uh, because labor is very expensive and also say if everybody wants to harvest their fields at the same time which is the case you will not find enough labor to do that now all farmers cannot afford to buy their own tractors and it's also not advisable that you buy uh, your own tractor your own harvester which are very expensive machines and which are going to be used for only couple of days in the whole year but in a pss model every farmer can get even the most expensive of machines because they only have to pay per use so uh, in the um, 12th five year plan there was a submission on agricultural mechanization which said the mission proposes to cater to adverse uh, economies of scales by promoting custom hiring services through the rural entrepreneurship model so the government through its policy wants to promote rural entrepreneurship uh, in, in uh, villages where in uh, some people in the villages can own uh, these particular machinery through support from government agencies and then they will run these machines in a pss model giving services to everyone it's beneficial for all farmers because your harvesting can be done on time at a uh, affordable cost as well as you can have more uh, efficient machines because the more efficient machines might be more expensive so if uh, you as an individual want to buy it you might not be able to afford them so you might go for less efficient machines which are more affordable so governments can contribute by proper policy approaches another part is conceptualizing the finance cycle so this is one example from uh, uh, this is a design by one of our professors at iit guwahati professor ikedas he designed a tricycle rickshaw and it is called as the bahan now the problem in this sector that he observed was uh, people do not have the means to buy these uh, rickshaws so as a result the rick cycle rickshaws will be bought by somebody and the cycle rickshaw drivers they are basically employed by these people as a result the major part of the earning that uh, he does during the whole day goes to the, the owner of the cycle rickshaw so the cycle rickshaw driver remains into a vicious cycle of poverty and he is not able to come out of it so along with this particular tricycle rickshaw design he along with other people created this rickshaw bank project with the help of an ngo and the center for rural development at uh, iit guwahati what this rickshaw bank project does it brings in microfinance into this sector so the rickshaw pullers they can take a uh, loan from these uh, this uh, microfinance scheme and in this case at a very low rate of uh, at which this person has to return back to the money this person can become the owner of the rickshaw and the money that he earns during the whole day remains with him the bahan entered into the lemka book of records for the success that it uh, achieved by rickshaw bank concept that started with the bahan it also won many international prizes for the innovation product service idea currently the bahan is running successfully in more than 10 states in india numbering more than so within first year 3 years of its uh, launch it was more than 10000 in number now it has reached uh, more than a uh, couple of lakhs so here you can see is very important finance cycle so your product when it has to be introduced into the market again this one is not an example of a pss as we had defined pss but why i bring in this particular concept is because uh, in order to show that okay a product a great product design to succeed in the market it might also need some financing possibilities especially in the bop segment so this is also an area where the governments can contribute that let's develop a finance cycle so that eventually uh, the rickshaw puller becomes the owner but it also brings him out of the vicious circle of poverty another aspect which we can which as designers we can consider is spss promotion through a cultural perspective say for example uh, bardwa is a local tourist destination 
this particular place is in the Nagao district of Assam. This uh, is the birthplace of Saint Shankar Dev who established Vaishnavism in this particular region. So, um, uh, during two festivals in the year, lakhs of people visit this place. This is a um, rural area. In spite of so many people visiting this place, this place has a huge lake. It is called Akashi Ganga Lake. The lake is uh, considered pious. Nobody is allowed to take a bath in that lake or to pollute that lake or to kill the fish in that particular lake. So, in spite of so many people visiting this particular place, because of this cultural perspective that this lake is very very pious, nobody goes and damages the sanctity of that particular lake. So, cultural perspective is a very important aspect. The meaning of the cultural perspective may vary from region to region. So, as designers we can also think how we can use the cultural perspective of a particular group of people to design for spaces. Say for example, culturally uh, our pa uh, so at home our, our parents would always say wasting food is a big crime. So, culturally we see wasting food as a big crime. But now the same crime is committed in abundance by people living in hostels or people uh, dining in um, say um, company cafeteria. How as designers we can bring in the same cultural perspective maybe so that people see uh, to it that they do not waste food even in hostel messes or company cafeterias. A big barrier for SPSS implementation to companies is Firstly, it needs to change your business model and the corporate mindset the way you operate. So, you need new skills and competences to do that. Another problem, a very big barrier is whenever you want to do a PSS, your initial investment is very high. So, uh, you require medium and long term investments compared to short term profit generated at the point of sale, which is a big barrier, which is a big economic barrier for any company. So, we have to figure out how do we resolve that particular issue as well. These spaces are connected with uncertainties like in cash flows. So, these two become the economic barriers for companies. SPSS barriers for designers. The biggest challenge for a uh, designer here is knowledge and skill in system design. So, there are certain, there are 12 competencies which a designer need to develop in order to be good at SPSS related design. These competences are systems thinking, ability to do interdisciplinary work or ability to work in interdisciplinary team, critical thinking and analysis, anticipatory thinking. You need to anticipate what will happen, what will be the result of your current decisions on future. Interpersonal relations and collaborations. So, how people re relate to each other, how they mm, interact with each other, how stakeholders interact with each other because you alone cannot give it. It has to be a combination of stakeholders who gives that. Empathy and change of perspective, strategic action. There is lot of ambiguity and uncertainty in this particular field. So, tolerance for ambiguity and uncertainty, personal involvement. The skill to do assessment and evaluation of uh, various parameters into sustainable to see their impact on sustainability, communication and use of media, justice, responsibility, and ethics. According to United Nations Environmental Program 2002, nevertheless, SPSS development is seen as a whole present a uh, potential for generating win win solution which promote profit, environmental, and social benefits. They have the potential to provide the necessary if not sufficient conditions to enable communities to leapfrog less resource intensive system of social and economical standards of living. So, the reading material remains the same for this entire SPSS lecture. In the next lecture of the week, we will get into discussing about methods and tools for design for SPSS. Thank you.